Nigeria's Dangote Oil Refinery, a $20 billion project, has officially commenced the processing of gasoline after overcoming recent crude oil shortages. With a processing capacity of 650,000 barrels per day, the refinery aims to transform the local fuel market and alleviate the ongoing supply challenges faced by the state-owned Niger National Petroleum Corporation, even as the national oil company is prepared to purchase its products exclusively to meet local demands. And as the refinery begins to test its gasoline output, the implications for Nigeria's energy landscape are significant, especially in light of NNPC's current financial struggles and the persistent fuel shortages affecting consumers across the country. Uh, let's at this point uh, let you know that um, Tolu Adiremi, uh, partner at Perchstone and Grace LP, um, joins us to further look into this. You're welcome, Tolu. It's nice to have you around. Can you please unmute your device? Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you for having me. And good morning. Uh, okay. So after lots of back and forth, how do you feel about the Dangote refinery, you know, finally beginning to process and sell gasoline? I, I think Nigeria must be booming with a lot of excitement now. Um, I think is uh, is victory for the country, that refinery, uh, I think must be regarded as a national asset. Uh, and I think it must also be protected as well. Uh, it's not just for Nigeria, but across Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and you know, for the first time, uh, the last time I, I, we had this sort of uh, excitement was with the Ajaokuta Steel Company, when you have that size of infrastructure, uh, which not only impacts nationally, but also internationally. I think the Dangote refinery uh, epitomizes one, and uh, I, I am certainly very excited about it, and I'm sure uh, every Nigerian should be excited about it. And like I did say, uh, it must be regarded as a national asset and must be protected as such. Mm. Now, okay, now uh, Nigeria currently, you know, spends billions of dollars annually importing refined uh, petroleum products. Uh, these refineries' operation will reduce that expenditure, um, saving the country substantial foreign exchange. Now, this would also have knock-on effect on saboteurs who have either to benefited immensely from status quo. Is that correct? That's correct. I'd like to get your reaction on that because you mentioned the, uh, <laughs> you mentioned the Ajokuta steel. Uh, we know what state it is right now, uh, owing to the fact that you know, it's one of the largest assets that Nigerian government or Nigeria, as it were, had. But then we understand the status right now. You know, we're looking at Dangote. Uh, thank God is run by, you know, um, a so-called um, number one, uh, you know, one of the richest in Africa. Let's, let's just put it that way. But then we have saboteurs, and we should be concerned about that. Larry, you have a very, very, very smart way of bringing me into the very tough end of the conversations. Now, certainly, and I'm sure you have followed the progress of this conversation uh, and the evolution of the Dangote refinery and you have seen uh, all the uh, challenges it has faced. It's really been topsy-turvy times uh, for Dangote Refinery. And the reason is simply because there are some people who have been benefiting uh, from the importation of PMS into the country, from uh, the payment of subsidies into the country. Most importantly, also from our inability to actually capture what I call data capture of consumption. So today you hear two different figures. So one figure tells you we, co we consume 70 million liters of petrol as a country. Another figure tells you we consume 30 million liters of it as a country. The reason is because these back-end saboteurs, they just make it difficult, you know, for government to see through what exactly is going on. So with the Dangote refinery, which is predominantly a private sector initiative, is a private sector run, and has also foreign funding uh, injected into it. There's going to be a lot of transparency. Uh, you can imagine that the organizational and governance structure is also going to be world standard. And so really, our downstream uh, oil and gas sector is just set for a rebirth. And I think that's exactly where we are. And so realistically, uh, and I hear, I'm sure you probably will come to that, mention of NNPC being the sole uh, so uh, purchaser of the crude, it just means that there's going to be a clearer line or clearer operational line by which PMS is dispensed into the country and the government can properly monitor the consumption 
and determine how much it invests into it. So I, I think um, the evolution or the birth of Dangote Refinery comes with two sides. There's the good side, which is what we have talked okay. about. Uh, there's the also not good side, you know, which is part of uh, the, the saboteurs that you have talked about. And I must assure you, uh, they're not just going to walk away like that. It's almost a cartel. And it's okay. a cartel that benefits from uh, a lax system. And with this refinery, they will do everything to frustrate it. And oh, okay. when I started my intervention, I said government must regard it as a national asset. This is the reason why I made that statement. Okay, so with this, we're hoping that um, this would actually save um, NNPCL's uh, skirmishes or maybe its blushes as regards um, fuel supply, as we've noticed the scarcity in Nigeria for about three months now. And Tolu, I'd like you to just stay with me on this one because we have our correspondent who is right on ground, Bernard Akedi, who has been monitoring the situation in some parts of Lagos and will be bringing us, um, it will be giving us the details now so that we have an understanding of what this of fuel scarcity is like and maybe uh, the Dangote entrance will actually um, cause disruption and a change. Uh, Bernard, we can see you and um, definitely we know that you have been monitoring the situation on the streets of Lagos as regards some the scarcity of fuel and we can see traffic uh, building up along the axis. So tell, uh, tell us where you are and let's, let's have the updates as regards what's happening. All right, uh, I'm in Lagos. I'm around the Bagada area. Um, and you said, well, you want to reach out to me to see if you can have an understanding. <laughs> I bet you, you would not have an understanding unless you come out here to see what exactly is going on along the roads here. Um, I've been standing here for a while now, and this is the only fuel station along this axis that is selling uh, petrol. This is Northwest. Um, I've not been able to, to confirm how much they're selling for, as a matter of fact. Now, the situation used to be that the longer the queue, the cheaper the fuel, or rather, um, you know, the cheaper the price per litre, uh, that will determine how long the queue is because people want to buy for cheap prices. But now, the situation is, as long as there's petrol, you will find queue. Or, or scratch that, actually. As long as people presume that there will be petrol being sold, you will find queues there, whether they're selling or not. Now, I have a gentleman who's standing here. I'd like to call, call on him to speak so he'll, he'll give better explanation. Uh, and I've been keeping him for a while, so I'll let him go. Please come closer. Um, now, Leko, I'd like you to listen to what he has to say. Good morning, okay. sir. Please, could you tell us your name? My name is Uchen Akalono. I'm from Imo State of Were North. Okay. Now, you were telling me that you've been here for a while. Tell me how long you've parked your car here for. I've been here since yesterday night, 10 p.m. Up to now, I've not gotten the fuel. Unfortunately, we are hearing that they have changed the price of the fuel in Northwest. We don't know how much they want to place their own. But, however, we heard that um, NMPC has selling for 850 and how much was NNPC selling for before? NNPC was selling for 568 and why not West is selling for 620 So now I'm surprised. I don't know what to do. Okay, let me quickly ask you before you leave us. How, how is this fuel queue, you know, change of, of price? How is the whole situation affecting you personally? Uh, I personally, I will sell let the price circulate once. If they're going to sell one 1,000 in all station, let it be one 1,000 as we end, easy enter, we buy and go. Because this is where I feed my family. If I didn't run around, I cannot feed myself or my family or friends. All right, thank you so much for joining okay. us. Um, Leko, that's just one out of the numerous people who have been passing by. Uh, mm. Those who are in their vehicles, vehicle upon vehicle, driver after driver, they just keep yelling. The country is bad, the country is bad. Um, NNPC give us fuel, uh, Nigeria give us fuel. It's, it's, it's just a, a, um, a brief illustration, and that's exactly what I'm saying. That's another person again. A brief illustration on how bad the situation is. Um, commercial vehicles, private vehicles, vehicle after vehicle, people just keep complaining about the situation of the country at the moment. Mm, it's, quite, it's quite sad, um, I must say, uh, Bernard, that we have in this situation um, spill over into this uh, particular um, you know, scenario. But then, um, da, um, of course, Bernard, before I let you go, I I'd like to find out from you as regards um, the fuel price. Uh, have you been able to visit probably other filling stations to compare the price maybe they have a particular price that you know nigerians or consumers are able to buy if we cannot have an accurate figure from this particular filling station maybe we have from other filling stations and be able to do a bit of comparison
Right now, I was out yesterday, and uh, the fuel station I was at was selling at uh, at about six eighteen. Um, so I'll start from NNPC. NNPC sells at the cheapest price, at least as at yesterday. Um, NNPC was selling for five sixty eight naira per liter, five hundred and sixty eight naira per liter. After NNPC, the closest I saw was selling for six thirteen, and then after that, there was another fuel station selling for six eighteen per liter, and then from there. I've seen 6.20, I've seen 6.28, I've seen 6.30, I've seen 6.50, and the highest I've seen so far is 700 in Lagos. Um, but based on what the gentleman who was speaking uh, just now said, um, he said that there are speculations that the price may go up uh, at NNPC stations. That he said that's what they've heard, unconfirmed. If that happens in NNPC, you know that the ripple effect will be felt across other fuel stations and their prices too would go up. This one where we're standing now, uh, there's no indication of what the price is on their billboard. We'll try to go in if we're allowed to see how much they're selling for. But for now, the list I've given you is what I had between yesterday and today. We'll keep our eyes open to see um, what happens today and beyond. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Bernard, for sharing this information with us. we we'll keep tabs with you. All right, so Tolu, um, back to you now. Of course, um, you just heard our reporter there, Bernard Akedi, uh, talking about the situation on ground as regards, uh, you know, the speculative price and what it might be and the fact that um, Dangote Refinery would be selling. Now, we don't have an actual price, but then what do you make of this uh, information in the first place? I think the sad reality, Larry, and, you know, it's not a nice thing to say, but I think we just have to say it is we're at a level where we must face a reality and what's a reality, uh, the price of uh, premium motor spirit, otherwise known as PMS, will have to go up. And let me give you some statistics why we have no choice but for it to go up. If you look at the landing cost of PMS when it's done by the private, the other private entities, it comes to, I think, about 90 cents. So that's under $1. If you look at what Dangote is doing, its own landing cost, I think, comes to about 80 cents per liter. Mm -hmm. right. Now, what constitutes, and I think if we break down these figures, uh, is going to assist a lot of Nigerians understand the inevitability of the hike in price. I will talk about what government needs to do thereafter. And so if at 80 cents to a liter, convert that into dollars. So there, I think dollar hovers around 1,450 or 1,500 or 1,006 uh, or, or 1,006. Now, when you convert 80 cents of that, you are hovering around about, let's say, 1,280 or 290. Mm. Now, if from what the gentleman Bernard said, NNPC is still selling at 500 or 600, I can almost assure you that what they are selling will be reserve stock. And so by the time they start purchasing uh, or lifting from the Dangote refinery, it must lead at a market, a, a competitive market price. And you may want to ask, oh, but we're not importing anymore. Yes, we're no longer importing. But you see, the price of petroleum product constitutes of three main things. One is the price of a crude. Two is the landing cost. Three is the distribution cost. Of these three main costs, we've only successfully removed one element of the cost. It has the freight, the lithium expense, the NPA cost, the master cost, etc. I'm not very sure that getting throughput cost as well as storage charge have been taken out. So within the landing cost, you still have two minor elements. Hmm. They are very minor, it's about one naira sixty one copper or thereabout. But we still have the distribution cost element and we still have the crude pricing element. And so if we really want to crash the price the way Nigerians expect, the way your uh, the gentleman who spoke to Bernard earlier on expect, then government must do more beyond selling dollar for Naira for crude, but having to now give a concessionary rate of crude oil sales to Dangote. And so if Dangote is able to purchase crude at a further discounted rate, then the price of it will go down. Now, you will argue that is that commercial? Because this is business. It may of not course. be commercial. So yeah. really, if I, don't, if I want to predict, I can tell you, Larry, 
that when Dangote starts or when NNPC starts lifting um, the sensible commercial price that it will have to sell price, uh, sell petrol to, to Nigerians will hover around 1,200 or 1,300. Wow. If it goes okay. anywhere beyond that, so that NNPC is still subsidizing. But here is the catch, Larry. Well, there is a new entity. Tolu, the... Tolu sorry to uh, butt in here. Uh, we may need to just um, go on a very short break right now. Just hold on to that thought, uh, even as you will be hoping to conclude on that. When we go on this break and return, we'll get back to you. Do stay with us. You're watching That's... Business Edge on New Central Television. So we have been uh, talking about um, the issue around um, Dangote Refinery, um, a foremost uh, refinery in Africa, of course, in Nigeria, now processing gasoline and uh, selling that um, to the sole buyer, that is the NNPC. And we're looking at um, the rippling effect and what that might have to do with the price of the commodity in Nigeria, four Nigerians will be purchasing this particular product, even as we know that there is fuel scarcity all over or in the major parts of Nigeria as we speak, with Nigerians groaning at the price and even the availability of this uh, particular commodity, biting hard into pockets and, um, of course, denting blows into businesses who actually rely on this source of energy to power their businesses. And we have been talking to Tolu Adoremi, who is partner at Perchstone and Great LP as regards this. And, um, of course, now, Tolu, the issue will still always revolve around the prices. And you've actually said that and there's a possibility that, you know, by the time we put ones and twos together um, across our I's and T's, now the possibility of the price to be retained around 1,200 Naira is actually imminent. And that is above the minimum wage, buying power of the people, and that would actually, you know, impact businesses in terms of or in terms of cost of operation. Now, how do you think that people will be able to survive this if the government does not come into, you know, uh, probably intervening, aside the con concessionary rates that you said, a lot of people are still talking about the need for, you know, uh, a reversal in, in, in the subsidy uh, regime. Now, I'm, I'm just looking at that and looking at what might play out here that might just reduce the price um, of this commodity. All right. Thank you very much, Lego. I think we must go back and adopt the power sector model. Uh, mm -hmm. You remember that I think around 2005 or thereabout, uh, the power sector had a similar challenge around the value chain. And uh, government ingeniously created what was called uh, the NBET, the Nigerian Bulk Trader Company Limited. Now, if you see the the news coming out that uh, Dangote will solely sell pet uh, petrol to NNPC, what it means is, and I know people have been talking about monopoly, it's not a monopoly. Um, it is an initial exclusive, NNPC will be an initial exclusive buyer under the provisions of Section 64 of the Petroleum Industry Act. So really, it's by law. It's the last resort uh, supplier. But what is even more important is that the entity that now drives the NNPCs downstream is a company known as OVH. Now, OVH is a company that I'm thinking, now speaking about solutions, if government really want to curb or reduce the impact of the competitive pricing, we may not have a choice about the competitive pricing, really. But if government wants to reduce the impact, is to look at the OVH, right? and recharacterize it as a bulk trader. So at any rate, for this period, Dangote is solely going to be selling to one party who can be the bulk trader. Government can now capitalize that bulk trader. Remember, the federal government or the president recently gave an instruction that the dividends of accrual to the ministers or the ministries of uh, Finance Incorporated and that of Petroleum, who are the shareholders of NNPCL, uh, that dividend should be plowed back into an NPC. That sum is about $2 trillion or thereabout. That sum can now be used to capitalize OVH as a bulk trader so that OVH can purchase the PMS from uh, Dangote and then subsidize it. We, we have no choice. It must be subsidized, mm. but perhaps at the OVH level, if it is capitalized, and then OVH can now sell to the smaller marketers so that, you know, PMS can go around the country. That way, you will drive down the prices. That's one model. Another model that government must consider is if it's not going to use the OVH as a bulk trader or a bulk supplier, 
then it must leave the price at it, as it is, but now go and implement subsidy regime for transport, the transport sector. Okay. Now, once you implement subsidy regime in the transport sector, ensure that you are very intentional about it, such that that subsidy must go directly, one, to convene people to work to firms, and two, transport that conveys produce from the farms to the cities or to the urban areas. Once you are able to do that, you will further drive down uh, the cost of uh, uh, the cost of food. And once you drive down the cost of food, I believe that with time, uh, the market will normalize. Uh, OVH will not, or NNPCL will not continue to be the sole, uh, the sole purchaser, as is being said now. It has to be so now, because if it doesn't do it, NNPC will be violating Section 64 of the PIA, because at the moment when crisis as a country, energy crisis. And that law makes NNPC uh, to preserve Nigeria's energy security and to be the sole or, or the supplier of last resort. And so that is why uh, Dangote is okay, doing so and then government is doing what they're doing. Okay, so um, when you talked about um, subsidy, I thought you were going to talk about probably subsidizing the transport or from the gasoline itself from um, the depots or probably from Dangote refinery um, to the filling stations. Uh, now, the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, I had a chat with one of my friends a couple of weeks back and I said, when Nigeria imports um, this commodity from international um, suppliers and it gets to the dock, there are certain amounts in taxes um, that are being paid, duties being paid to several agencies of government. And by the time you add all that costs uh, on this particular commodity, and it's eventually been shipped to the depots, and of course it gets to the filling station, all those costs are added, and that is why we also have an increase in the price of these commodities. So in this particular scenario, um, don't you think probably if um, a subsidy on the cost of transporting this commodity itself from point A to the final end, it can actually help? Yes, it will. But you see, what would have helped us in the past is the Equalization Fund. That was what the old Equalization Fund was meant for. So when you realize that uh, PMS will be uh, lifted from a papa port and taken to places like Benin, places like the North, uh, it is expected that the pricing should be the same across the country. And so what government did with the Equalization Fund is to pay the difference. That is also subsidy pay the difference for people who live in that area so that they themselves can buy PMS at the same rate that people in Lagos are the purchasing. But the dynamics are now different at, at Lagos. Yeah. The, this, the, the subsidy you talk about, remember when I started, I said there are three elements. There's a price of crude, there's a landing cost, and there's a distribution cost. I'm not sure there's much you can do about the distribution cost, to be honest, because really not all the costs are allocable to the lifting agencies. There are some of those costs that are cost of the refinery itself. Now, do you really want to waive that? If you waive that, how do you expect the refinery to continue to run? And so, which is why I said, when you look at the calculus, there are some costs that are waivable costs. There are some costs that are unlikely to be waivable, and there are some costs that are variable cost. The ones that you can really waive will be the landing cost if we continue to focus uh, on Dangote. But your distribu distribution cost, I am sorry, uh, I'm not sure how much of that. Of course, uh, government may consider it, but don't forget that these agencies themselves are also revenue generating agencies. And this is how governments also generate revenue to fund other social uh, infrastructural projects in the country. So government must be very careful how much of waiver it continues to give. What it must go to do is it must go to look at the source of the value that the PMS creates. And then if there's a high price in there, then it should do everything to cushion the effect of that high price. And that is why I said government must subsidize transportation uh, and not all even the ambit of transportation. Those particularly that convey uh, the people are probably called tier one passengers, and of course, transportation that transports foodstuff and produce uh, from market to the urban area. I think we must be very careful how much of weavers we continue to ask the government to give. Otherwise, the government will not be able uh, to uh, uh, deliver on the oh. promises that is set. 
There's okay. a final okay. problem, but I hope I'm hoping we have more time to just mention that final problem. Uh, okay, so we actually do not have enough time to uh, get to that point, but then of course this is a continuing conversation that we'll, con to, we'll continue to look into and probably I will do it in two seconds. to talk more about it. We, we don't have that time. We don't have that luxury for now. But then um, Tolu Aliremi, partner, Perchstone and Grace LP, we appreciate um, your contributions on the show uh, this morning and we hope to engage you some other time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lego.